Okay, uh, how are you guys doing? Now we're going to move on to that part of the Olympic section that deals with complex numbers. Now, for the AMC 12, one or two questions will come up involving complex numbers. For the AMC 10, no questions will come up involving complex numbers simply because I believe when you reach that level, you have not done that in your syllabus yet, in high school syllabus. But nonetheless, complex numbers, there are a few concepts that you need to know. It's just simply, if you wish, an extension or another way to look at numbers which are not in the real plane. That's why they're called complex numbers. And with just these few definitions or these few concepts about complex numbers, you can solve a whole host of problems. Difficulty wise, I would rate them as quite average, but if you have a firm grasp of the concept, um, the problems that come up shouldn't be a problem at all. Okay, I'm not too sure whether, uh, no pun intended. All right, so what is a complex number? A complex number, we define it as this. Z equals to A plus B I, where A and B are real, and I equals to square root of minus one. What we like to call an imaginary number is the square root of minus one because, as we know, you can't take the root of a negative number. With 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 all the mathematics before this, whenever we see a square root minus 1, we say it's undefined. Well, when we move into complex numbers, they, we just simply put an i to represent that. Now, formally, if you want to write it as a set, complex numbers is equals to... Sorry, get a bracket over here, okay? We were writing the zeta um, Greek alphabet a bit too long, but... Okay, right bracket here. Z equals to A plus B I, where A and B belong to the real set and I is equal to square root of minus 1 okay that's formally what the complex numbers mean that A and B are real and I is the imaginary number so as you can see any complex Z you can kind of break it down into its real number real component which is A and its imaginary component which is B both of them, I understand that both of them are real, but see, when you take a real number and you times by i, this becomes the imaginary number. So the imaginary side of the complex number is b times i, and the real side is a. And then from there, we can write this. Let z equals to a plus b i, and w equals to c plus d i. Let Z and W be two different complex numbers and Z equals to W if and only if A equals to C and B equals to D. Quite logical as you may think because the real component must be equal to the real component. So the real component of Z is A, the real component of W is C, they must equal and the imaginary component which is B and D they must equal over here. Then when, they, when the real components equal, the imaginary components equal each other, then the complex number Z is equal to W if and only if this. They're equal. Okay. You will use this result a lot. This forms the basis of many of the you know, solving equations. Okay. Then after that, most probably, you know, we will just want to move logically to the Z plus W. The addition of complex numbers, which is equal to simply S, A plus C, which let's just put in a bracket plus B plus D I, the imaginary part. All we do is that we add up the real part, put them together, and we add up the imaginary part and put them together, which is B and D over here. This is quite logical that it just follows swiftly to this Z plus W equals to this. However, now we have Z multiplied by W, the multiplication of two complex numbers. Now, you may want to look at it as, you can look at it, or you may think that is simply A times W, A times C, and B times D, the imaginary part. Well, you will be wrong because as we know, when we multiply polynomials, each of the separate components must multiply with the other polynomial. So it's no different from a complex number. We will write as A plus B I multiplied by C plus D I. The two components are here, the two components are here. So just like multiplying out polynomials, 
the real part A must multiply with C and must multiply with DI. And the, this DI must multiply with C and multiply with DI. So if we were to write it, just write the whole thing. Okay, so we got AC here. Then we multiply with this one plus ADI. Then we plus this one multiplied by this, which is BCI. And this multiplied by this. Okay, now watch this one carefully because I times I gives you negative 1 from our definition over here. I is equals to minus 1, square root of minus 1. So I times I or I squared is simply equal to minus 1. Having said that, when we multiply these two together, it's a plus sign here, but I times I will give us minus 1. So it will be minus BD. Hope that is clear enough. And then from here, we just simply group the real parts and the imaginary parts separately which is equal to AC, let's just put a bracket, take away BD plus AD plus BC, close bracket, imaginary number. And there we go. That is what we get when we multiply two imaginary numbers, two complex numbers together like this. Okay, this is perhaps the part of the definition where you would need to pay more careful attention on. Okay. And after that, we got what we have, the complex conjugate. Okay, all this you can see on the page in front of you, so I'll just remove this and talk about the complex conjugate. 